it's a pleasure to um, to speak with you, uh, Mark. Mark Saban, by the way, is going to be the um, Zurich Lecture Series presenter in Zurich in October 2019. This is our 10th Zurich Lecture Series event, so it's an anniversary of sorts, and we're very glad to have you come to uh, share with us. Well, I'm very, very excited and very pleased to be to be uh, to have been offered the opportunity to do so. So, why don't we begin, Mark, uh, by just uh, tell us a bit about yourself? What what is your? How did you come to Jungian analysis? What is your background? Your training? Yeah, well, um, I'm I'm not one of these people. Uh, I'm not a sort of cradle Jungian, as it were. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't read Memories, Dreams, Reflections when I was four years old or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I came to it fairly late, actually. I, I was, uh, and indeed, I came to depth psychology fairly late. I was uh, for many years. Uh, I mean, I was I was always interested in in the kind of things that you might expect a Jungian to be interested in. I was interested in myth, I was in, in fairy tales, I was interested in the imagination. Uh, but uh, I studied uh, classics at uh, Oxford and uh, I then uh, went immediately into working as an actor. So I became an actor and performer for many years, so 15, about 15 years. Mainly theatre stuff. Uh, I did one film. I, I can be I can be seen in Shakespeare in Love if you look if you look closely. Oh really? Oh, I like that film very much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I play I'm actually Lady Capulet in the in the in the uh, play within the play, as it were. So <laughs> next time you watch it, you'll have to look out for me. I'll make a point of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but that was the only film I did. Mostly I did theatre. I did quite a lot of Shakespeare um, and. Uh, and, and a kind of a very sort of physical theatre sort of sort of mm -hmm. stuff um, for yeah for, as I say for about fifteen years. But towards the end of that period, I think I was I was slightly losing losing my faith in it uh, in myself within it really. And I was starting to think there's there's more to me than this. I think is what is uh, I, the way I would describe it. I felt that there was something missing somewhere. Um, and I, uh, I, I was in, as, as it happens, I was, I was doing, uh, I was in a, a, a pantomime in Los Angeles, of all places, um, which, uh, I was doing, uh, yeah, I was, I was, yeah, it was, it was, uh, a strange, uh, production of a, a British style pantomime. And of course, um, the, um, uh, Los Angelinos had no idea what to make of that at all. But we, 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 the, the production starred Zsa Zsa Gabor, actually, as the fairy godmother. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, oh, wonderful. Yeah, well, it wasn't quite as wonderful as it sounds. But um, I, I was in a bookshop in Los Angeles, and I picked up um, uh, the Thomas More book, Care of the Soul. And that's uh, fascinated by it. I was fascinated by the approach. I was fascinated by the content. And so I immediately uh, started uh, reading. Uh, uh, I immediately started reading James Hillman. Actually, that was that was yeah. where that took me straight away. And of course, the more I read Hillman, uh, the more I realised that I needed to read Jung because Hillman, of course, refers mm -hmm. to Jung a fair bit, um, not perhaps as much as he ought to, but uh, he he does talk <laughs> about Jung. Uh, so um, that led me in that direction. And and what also what I also started feeling fairly quickly, you know. I, I, absolutely gobbled up Hillman and started reading Jung. And I realized that uh, in order to have any real understanding of this, I needed to, to go into analysis myself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I did. Uh, uh, I, I, I found, uh, uh, I found, uh, you know, I researched to try to find a Jungian analyst that was, that was the most kind of um, Hillmanian that I could find in London. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I did fairly well at that. Um, but uh, I fairly quickly started thinking, actually, maybe this is something I'd like to do. You know, this, this, is, this, is, this is something I could do, something that, 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 that really excites me, that, that, that fascinates me, and which I'd like to pursue. And I could imagine, I could, mm -hmm. I could begin to imagine myself doing it. So uh, eventually, many years later, having trained with the independent group of analytical psychologists in London, um, mm -hmm. I came out the other end as a... As a union analyst. So the independent group is classically oriented. Um, yeah, it's 
Yeah. It has a kind of, I mean, it is mostly, I think, I think it would be a fair description. There are, there are people at the more kind of archetypal end. Uh, there are some people who one might describe as, as more down the developmental end, possibly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a good mixture of different, different approaches, really. And which of those did you gravitate to? Well, I certainly gravitated very much to the, to start with uh, uh, to the archetypal end of things. Mm -hmm. um, and my journey since then has been a sort of drifting. Um, I wouldn't say I'm exactly I've exactly drifted in the direction of the developmental school, but I've certainly drifted uh, away from the archetypal school. I think mm -hmm. I think. Uh, uh, I've found uh, I th when I started practicing uh, and started having clients and having difficult clients in particular, I started uh, realizing that uh, there was there was more to uh, you know Hill Hill Hillman's uh, sort of um, disdain for transference counter transference work. It seemed mm -hmm. to me. Really, really wasn't good enough. At the, at the end Clinically, of the quite weak, I think. The I think approach. Yeah. Intellectually interesting, but it's so. fascinating. But it doesn't quite doesn't quite work in practice. No, mm -hmm. um, I found anyway. I mean, uh, other people may have had different experiences, but that left me with an interesting uh, question, which was which was what was going on there? Because because uh, I've I've always been interested in the theoretical aspect of all this. Uh, and and I and I and that that question mark stayed with me as to, as to what what you know how do I how do I account for this uh, this difference you know how do I account for the fact that the archetype school doesn't quite doesn't quite do it for me anymore there's something there's something else going on here that needs to be accounted for and I think that that actually f has fed into the kind of uh, uh, the kind of work, the kind of research I've been doing, which which has brought me to the the, the writing of of the uh, of these lectures and and the book, which which sort of goes with them. Yes, well, let's let's go into that bit. Uh, if you could um, just um, give us some tidbits, something to whet the appetite for what you're going to bring us in Zurich. The title of your lectures. If I've got it right. What, there's a quotation from Goethe, alas, two souls. Two souls, alas, yes. Two souls, alas, yes. So this kind of division and uh, Jung's, and then you're looking at Jung's personality, number one and number two, and how this eventually created or went into the creation of analytical psychology. That, yeah, that's, that's your general topic, I guess. What, how, how, what are you going to say about all that? Yeah, well, that's that's more or less it, um, uh, and that certainly accounts for the, the kind of first half of of, of what I'll be talking about. Um, it, it, I mean, I, just to give you a little bit of an intro, I mean, I I started this because I wanted to write something about about the opposites in you, know, the, the, or the the problem of the opposites, as Jung calls it, uh, and and as as you know, he refers to the opposites. I don't think he ever wrote anything without talking about the opposites in it somewhere. So it's a pretty it's a pretty prevalent topic in Jungian psychology, and yet it seemed to me there was there I couldn't work out why no one had written a book about the opposites. You know, just mm. concentrating on that problem. Um, uh, I fairly soon discovered why no one had written a book about it. <laughs> but, uh, it's an enormously difficult topic. And of course, the, the, I, I head off in the direction of, uh, uh, in a sort of philosophical direction, because the idea of the opposites is already a kind of philosophical idea. Mm -hmm. And I went off with, you know, Aristotle and Heraclitus and Hegel and Schelling. And, and, uh -huh. and then I realized I was so far away from Jungian psychology that, that, that there was no way back. Uh, so I then retraced my steps and 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 started thinking about this this as a problem, and wondering where it where it had come up for Jung. I suppose was the question because because increasingly I think the more I look at Jung's psychology, the more the more apparent it is to me that everything in Jung's psychology uh, has its kind of basis in Jung's experience somewhere. If you can't find it in Jung's experience, then then it's it's not likely to be an extra, a particularly important thing for Jung. Uh, and that, and in in effect, that's what he means when he talks about uh, his psychology being empirical. He means that that he's he's lived it. He's he's done it. He knows this because he's Very been much based on experience. Yeah. yeah, 
Um, and he, he, you know, and, and of course he then, when he, when he goes into the collective works, he disguises that in all sorts of ways, but it's certainly there. And, and, and the place I went to for this question of the opposites was uh, the first three chapters of Memories, Dreams, Reflections, where he talks about this extraordinary experience of having these two personalities, as he, as he mm. calls it, and, and, and the difficulties he had with having two personalities. Mm. Uh, and it's very striking there that, that he, 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 he says very clearly that this... This wasn't a pathological, you know, he's kind of heading off Winnicott in advance, as it were. He's saying this was not a pathological experience. Uh, this, is, this is something that, that we all share. Now, well, this, this, uh, this essay by Winnicott, uh, when Winnicott reviewed uh, Memories, Dreams, Reflections, and he talked about Jung's problems, psychological problems, his childhood psychosis, his schizophrenic tendencies, and so on. Um, he wrote a very interesting article about that published in the Journal of Analytical Psychology a few years ago. And that's really what enticed me to, to invite you and, uh, and to bring you to Zurich, because I found that the distinctions you were making there between the way Jung understood this problem of two personalities and, and imagination and the way Winnicott did mm -hmm. uh, was essentially very different, very important to make that distinction. Um, yeah, and I, I think, I mean, what I was trying to highlight there was, was that the, the, the kind of psychoanalytic model of the psyche was, was really very, very different from, the, from, the, from Jung's model. Um, and th this, this was not a kind of a polemical attempt to say, therefore, we should have nothing to do with psychoanalysis. But, but you know, my conclusion was that unless we can work and see the differences between the two, and they're very apparent, I think, uh, then you can't uh, even begin to have a conversation, uh, you know, between the two camps, as it were. Mm -hmm. so, uh, as long as one just assumes that they're roughly the same, then then you're going to get into all sorts of tangles, really. And and uh, and that's in effect what Winnicott does when he try, tries to to approach Jung's psychology. He, he doesn't, you know, he can only bring to it this psychoanalytic approach, which doesn't doesn't fit the bill, really. Um. I, I get the sense uh, from some of the things you've said or written that you, you take a, a critical um, stance towards um, uh, some of the deficits in, in Jung's uh, psychology, let's say the one-sidedness, the emphasis on the inner world, the intra-psychic, as opposed to the interpersonal, interactive, uh, is that going to be um, a theme in your lectures? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's that's really where I uh, I kind of end up. I mean, I, 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 having looked at the two personalities, having followed the idea of the two personalities through into Jung's psychology, and it's very, it's, it seems to me very clear that that that, that 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 idea of these two different aspects jostling in tension with each other and when brought together in a creative way enabling transformation uh that that idea is is absolutely central to jung's jung's concept of individuation that's really what individuation is it's a constant process of, of mm -hmm. avoiding one-sidedness bringing in the other and so on the other. Uh, yeah mm -hmm. um and that uh, and, and that if you look at things like the transcendent function, if you look at uh, the importance of active imagination as a bringing together of conscious and unconscious, if you look at um, introversion, extroversion, the typology, all, all that stuff engages this, this whole question of, you know, what he calls the problem of the opposites, but which is always this kind of um, actual wrestling between, between different uh, opposing, apparently opposing aspects which need to be brought, somehow brought together and when they are brought together that's when the interesting thing happens that's when the new thing can happen you can move on that seems to be fundamental to Jung's psychology but uh, I, I also noticed that that there was a, a strong you know if, if one looks at it from the point of view this point of view of the two personalities uh, personality number one for Jung is, uh, is, 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 is definitely a kind of outward looking relational aspect of the psyche. Uh, 
especially in contrast with personality number two, which, which and Jung emphasizes very powerfully uh, this sort of inner aspect, the intrapsychic aspects of personality number two. It's, it's, and the solitude that goes with that and the idea of the secret. These are the things he really bangs on about in Memories During His Reflections um, and elsewhere. Uh, as being crucial, and it seems to me that that, uh, that there's he's he's far more interested, and 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 just falls generally much more. You know, there's a general tendency in Jung to fall in the direction of personality number two. You know, that's the area that he's really comfortable in, uh, and that's and that's the area he's interested in. And that's the area he wants to explore, and. Uh, and I think that the effect of that has been historically. I mean, you know, I mean, he himself, uh, as we know, acknowledges that that any psycho, anyone's psychology is a subjective confession. So we would expect this to be the case. In, in yeah. way. You know, that's that's young the man. That's the person he was. But this, as it were, this kind of psychologic of the two personalities insists that, yes, but what about the other side? What about that other bit? What about the outward looking bit? What about this bit which is difficult for you? That's the bit that needs to be constantly brought in to play uh, mm -hmm. in order to, to enable this individuating process again. And it seems to me that Jung doesn't always follow through with that. He doesn't always allow for that. Mm -hmm. this, 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 this sort of, as it were, bias in the direction of the inner um, tends to powerfully outweigh. And he finds all, all sorts of ways to avoid so, so in effect, he, he, you know, in many places, he almost defines the idea of the psych, defines psychology as what is concerned with the inner. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me that that's cheating slightly because you've you've left out the other there. You've left out the outer, the mm -hmm. outer. And of course, it, you know, this is important when we think about um, psychotherapy because it's you know the process of psychotherapy is the meeting with the other it is about related relationship it is about connection with the other and Jung knew that of course. i'm not you know Jung, all that is there in in Jung's work on on transference and counter yeah. transference yeah. but he it doesn't it's not always consistent with everything else that he writes do you think uh, i mean we all have our own Jung. we all imagine him uh uh, in his daily life, his professional life, his clinical work, uh, does your young uh, is your young uh, a brilliant clinician? Is he clinically um, admirable, or would you criticize his clinical? Well, it, it, you're asking all the, all the right questions, Murray. Um, uh, the, the, this is precisely what the the area that I'm kind of looking at at the moment, and. And I've been I've been reading um, some accounts of of Jung's actual work with with, with clients, uh, Christiana Morgan, uh, and also I read the, the the biography of Peter Baines. It was interesting to see the way the way Jung dealt with 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 Baines mm -hmm. as well, and 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 of course there are other examples as well. And it seems to me that that there's a real really interesting gap between what one reads about the way he dealt with these these clients. And what he says in in Psychology of the Transference about this this this, mm. this sort of uh, you know this mutuality which goes yeah. on, yeah. which he emphasises, which is absolutely fascinating and of enormous value, I think. But in his actual practice, it's very hard to find any account which which allows for that or or, or highlights that. Mm. On the contrary, Jung nearly always seems to steer every steer things in the direction of the archetypal the symbolic. And when he gets there, he kind of just just dom dominates and and provides the material. He he provides the interpretations. He tells them you know, what the meaning of their dreams and their active imaginations are. And, uh, and there's very little room for this kind of mutuality that, that, uh, that he talks about in, in Psychology of the Transference. Yeah, mutuality is a, is a tricky topic, isn't it? Um, one knows that he was affected by his patients. He talks about that, and, and he gives some examples of it, um, and, and powerfully affected and mutual influences and so on. He opened himself to quite a number of people. Um, but he was such a dominant figure. He was Leo, yeah. you know, he, um, he filled yeah. people who would, I remember Mario Jacoby saying years ago, 
he can't, couldn't imagine being an analysis with Jung because Jung was such a big personality. There was no room for anybody else. When you read these accounts, that's the impression you get. I mean, when, when Baines, you know, right, he, he, he recounts his first, first session with Jung and it's, and it's as if he's met a god, you know. I mean, <laughs> and one wonders about what, what the, you know, I mean, so, so stuff like, you know, transference, counter-transference within that setting is going to be pretty, pretty difficult. That's very special. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I'm really looking forward to, to hearing you about this. You, uh, you, I know you've studied memories, dreams, reflections very carefully. You wrote a chapter in um, Why We Still Read Jung, um, that collection of essays on, uh, on memories, dreams, reflections. Um, so that's, that was the starting point in a way for this, Mario. That was, that was, was the, it? Yeah. Uh, I know you've, you've studied Jung's biography very carefully and I think um, uh, really look forward to hearing some of your observations and where you're taking that, because um, in a sense, I think you're going to offer a some uh, clinical uh, revisionism to at least the classical approach of dream interpretation, active imagination, bringing it back more into the interactive and interpersonal. Yes, I think so. I think that's where that's where it leads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. It's more of a, it's, it's a kind of questioning, really. Uh, I, it's not that I have a, a kind of, a sort of uh, a, a new gospel of, of, of Jung to deliver, but, uh, but I do think that if you question it with, with this, you know, I mean, I think that the, the image that, 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 that I find uh, very helpful is this, uh, the image of, and it's not my image, uh, but uh, the idea of uh, binocularity, that yeah. you need... Uh, you know, to get proper 3D vision, you need both both uh, both eyes, uh, and and uh, that that moves you onto a whole different level, as it were. But you do need both of them, and they both need to be different. And and that uh, when when the two personalities, you know, or, or, or whatever they represent, come together, then you get that, and that's when that's when things move forward. And I think that's a a very, uh, I found that a very stimulating and useful approach to apply to, to Jung, uh, you know, as well as to anything else. Really. One final question. Um, I didn't know that you'd been an actor in your previous life. Um, do, do you think that was a good preparation for being an analyst? I mean, to be yeah. improvising. Analysts have to improvise a lot, don't they? Yes, yes. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm the person to say, but uh, it, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and, and you, you know, as, as an actor, you spend your life inhabiting other people's psyches and having to, you know, get into them in order to do that. So, so there's certainly something, something there. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting what you say about improvising, because I always felt that I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't very, improvising wasn't my strong suit. So, uh, I now find myself uh, working with clients every day, and it's really a, a, you know it's it's all improvisation, uh, and and, yeah. and and therefore very exciting, I think, and very uh, you know the, the, the new is coming in all the time. Uh, and that's very young, in, isn't it? Young says, "Leave your theories at the door when you walk in into the room with a patient." Yeah. There you yeah. are. Yeah, you have to improvise. Yeah, you do. Um, again, not something that necessarily Jung did all the time, but it certainly <laughs> says that we should, yes. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, and I really look forward to seeing you. Have you been to Zurich before, or will this be a first visit to Zurich? No, it'll be uh, a second visit, actually. I, I, I went to the old Jung Institute uh, for, uh, and, and did one of their sort of uh, little weekly visits that you used Intensive. to have. Uh, yeah. but, uh, uh, which I very much enjoyed, but uh, that was that was a while ago now. So I'll, I'm very much looking forward to returning. Okay, great. I'm sure it'll be a wonderful experience for us, and I hope it will for you too. Thank you, Mark. Okay, Mark. Great talking to you. See you before long. Great. Bye bye. Bye bye.